If there's anyone here that doesn't know Business Insider, I hope there's not, but um, by way of brief introduction, we are an uh, eight-year-old business news website. We reach 88 million readers a month through our eight international editions. Actually, those of you in the room who do what you do will appreciate that our new corporate owners, we were purchased by uh, Axel Springer in Germany uh, just a month ago, would prefer that I use the Comscore numbers to be consistent with them. Uh, so that would be 40 million in the US, according to Comscore. But uh, those of us in, in the digital world prefer our Google Analytics numbers, which are more accurate. So 88 million worldwide is the number I'd like you to take away. And then if you really want a big number, uh, if you count up all of our social readership on Facebook and Instagram and wherever else, it's about 450 million a month that we reach through all those platforms. So that's Business Insider. Um, and we have two new brands that we launched this year, one being Tech Insider, which covers science and technology and innovation, and the other being The Insider, which actually we launched uh, on, on social. It doesn't have a website yet. Um, and it's already amassing. I think we have over 100,000 Facebook followers. Um, and it started out just, I'd like to tell you, it was an incredibly brilliant PR move um, and, and strategy. In fact, it actually did get, a lot, get us a lot of attention in the press. But it was really because we were ready. And we had an editor who was ready to go. And we had a tech team that wasn't ready to build a website. And so we launched on social. And it's been a great learning for us, actually. So. Um, the modern newsroom is our topic tonight. This is our newsroom. Uh, it's a picture from about a year and a half ago when we moved into the new office. For those of you who know our CEO and editor-in-chief, he's tucked there in the back. That's Henry Blodgett. And we've hired about 100 people since this picture was taken. Uh, just a couple of the quick looks at the newsroom. Very open, airy kind of uh, setup. And um, one thing you'll see a lot of is screens. You know, many of our writers have, it's, it's the norm is to have at least two screens, but some of them have even more. Uh, our markets um, reporter in the lower right there, I think has three, at least three screens he's looking at all the time. And we do a lot of video uh, right in the office. I think our video team is up to about 25 producers. Um, or as we say, they're, they're producers and we have shredders and predators which the shredders are the folks that can shoot and edit, and the predators can produce, shoot, and edit. So uh, they're multifaceted, multi-talented folks. They also do a lot of animation. Um, OK, so the modern newsroom and data, that's what we're talking about tonight. And um, Tina did warn me that we don't do death by PowerPoint here. We are not doing PowerPoints. But I begged her to let me give you some pictures, because the topic of data in the newsroom seems kind of tedious to me, um, but I hope we could bring it to light with some pictures. So there, there, there are two things that we do with data, and there's one thing that we don't do with data. Um, the most important thing we do is we understand what works so that we can do more of it. We also do a little bit of personalization, and we have goals to do more personalization. Uh, we do not write to the data, and by that I mean we, our editors do not have a dashboard that tells them what's trending on Google so they can write stories about it. Uh, I'm not knocking that. I know other publications are successful doing that. Um, you know, we don't, we don't. So that's not a use of data for us. So um, what is this business of understanding what the data so we can do better? Well, we, we of course have a proprietary CMS because you have to have a um, proprietary co content management system to really um, we think it's an important strategic asset for us, and it has to have a name because they have names, and ours is called Viking uh, for the seafaring adventurers. Uh, and our Viking gives us lots and lots of insights. So this is a view that uh, an editor of our website would have of, of the home page. And on this screen, what you can see are a bunch of headlines that are just uh, running down the home page. And there are little red numbers and boxes and little black numbers. The black numbers are the absolute clicks on that story since it was posted. I did take these screenshots really early in the morning, so there wasn't a lot of activity. Um, the red numbers are the, the, um, the pace, the, so the relative um, popularity of those articles. And so our, editor, our editors, the folks who are curating the home pages, when they look at the home page, they know what's working. What are our users clicking on? They particularly use this um, in two ways. 
One is to curate the top story. So it's really cool to watch them. Let, let's say we have a lead story, and they think it's an important story. And, and people are not clicking on it. It has no heat, as they refer to that red box. They'll change the headline. They'll change the picture. They'll work that story until they can see the audience responding to it. Or they'll give up because no one cares and they'll move on to another story. Or they'll leave it there because they think it's really important and they don't care if no one's clicking on it. But the, the heat, as we call that red box, helps them understand how to package that story to get people's interest.